Well, hello world. Welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs, and today we're going to be tracking some bass. This is part of our series from pre-production to final mix. And if you watched the first video, you already know that I've recorded everything through the HX Stomp from Line 6, all the scratch tracking guitars and the bass. And the drums are superior drummer, so I'm not going to go through all that again. We're going to be using the Ampeg SVT3 Pro and it's di out sounds really good and i have a cabinet mic'd in the iso booth i'm going to take you over there to show you what i have set up all right so i mic'd up this ampeg pro neo cabinet it's got two tens in it the microphone is a 421 sennheiser and it is pointed at the dust cover but a little bit off to the right and you kind of maybe you can kind of see it and it's about six inches away and you know you a lot of times you you know you can put it right on there but i'm just trying to get a little bit of the sound of this and it's not going to be the bulk of the sound but i find that when you do track bass that has fuzz or distortion on it it helps to use a cabinet because the speaker produces a smoother distortion sound than your direct in will it's going to be um you know the di is going to have more garbage in it i guess and coming out of the speaker it smooths out some of that stuff so you can get blended in and you know you get the bottom end from the the di and the mid-range from the cabinet um, sometimes i don't mic a cabinet at all it really depends on uh the situation all right now here's the head the ampeg sv t3 pro and I have the direct out going into the patch bay somewhere in there and that is all being routed to the console all right so on the console we have the cabinet on uh, channel 3 the DI is on channel 4 I have the Cappy EQ on the mic doing uh, 4 dB at 1.5 and the uh, DI has 200 getting boosted uh, for 2 dB and I filtered out uh, 50 Hertz on the cabinet because I would probably take that out anyway if not even more later so that's what I did and then I have inserts um, on both of them so the the cabinet is getting some treatment from the distressor and then the DI is going through an LA-2A. And they are both hitting the Neve 542 tape emulators. There's the LA-2A. And that's going to be doing, I don't know, 7 to 10 dB at the most. Especially when you hit a low lower note. Um, it'll do some heavy lifting there. And then the distressor is on the opto setting for this with distortion 3 on and that's going to be doing some light compression on the cabinet speaker because it really doesn't need too much because the speaker does some of the compressing for you and then for the fuzz actually first time i'm using this for the fuzz is the attack decay from electro harmonics and the reason I'm using it is because it has a blend knob, so I can blend the fuzz in with the with the uh, original signal, so I don't lose the low end. So I'm getting to do that because none of my other muff pedals have that on there, but this has that kind of a really gnarly fuzz on it. I'm not going crazy with the fuzz, but it's it's uh you know enough that it'll help certain notes stick out in the mix. So. That's that, but I like how this bass tone sounds with and without the fuzz, so I'll show you in a second. But that's it. That is the setup, and there's the uh, Neve 542s. Red is on both, and maxed out, and then tape is on. I'm going to put it on 30, and it's blended 50-50, basically. So, all right, so this is probably a lot of talk, and now it's time to show you what it sounds like all right so i want to just show you what the bass sounds like with and without this uh, fuzz pedal hendrix you want to hear the difference mm -hmm. I do. all right so this is with the fuzz on yeah. 
<laughs> it's making the same song. All right, so oh, all right, and here's without it. I'm gonna go get a pig. Where's the pig thing? Where's the ox? I got these on the pig. One at a time. All right, that's it. Good. I see you dancing. I messed up again. Hi. All right, let's do this. And we are in that mode again. All right, so it's the next day. I came in with some fresh ears so I could actually hear this stuff, and I did uh, some EQing to the DI and to the mic, um, and then I auto-aligned them. So I have stuff on buses and as well, which I'll explain later, but right now we're just gonna talk about this little scheme here. And I'm going to hit solo and just let you hear the DI by itself. And now we'll listen to the mic. And now both of them together. I have the mic pretty low, but it does add some articulation when everything else is going on. So you actually hear it it actually is more noticeable in the mix than it is soloed out. Also, I used the auto align. I wasn't sure if I you know, was going to, but um, I ended up using it. So let's see. So that's with it engaged. I'm gonna bypass it so we can hear the difference. So it just lets that mid-range of the mic actually be there. So it wasn't horrible, but noticeably better with uh, the auto align. That's one thing about using a DI and an amp. Um, you're you're going to have some phasing issues because direct is right there and you have time between the 
cabinet and mic and all that stuff so so anyway and then I have everything going over to this base bus which is SSL 4KB and I am taking out a little bit of the high end and I'm actually filtering out below uh, everything below 70 for the base so I might add it back in later it, it really depends on how I get the drums to sound and all that stuff but for this I just did that so uh, the you know the drums had room and my cymbals have you know there's not a lot of stuff above that on the bass but using the fuzz you're gonna have a little noise and all that stuff and you're already got guitars that are fuzzy and all that stuff and then let's see did I do anything else no again I use LA-2A even though I track through the LA-2A um, I use that for the you know because these the DI and the and the uh, microphone are all summed to this one bus so now they're getting treated as one for the compression Yeah, you know, one to two dB of compression combined. It's gonna help glue them together. Then I followed that up with an 1176 with a slow attack and a middle of the road release. three to five dB of compression. Because the LA-2A is doing some work and before it, it's not very, I don't notice the compression as, you know, it's just holding everything. And then I followed that up with the Fatso, which is uh, something I do a lot with buses. You see I have, it says bombs buses cause it's a starting point for me. I use just the tranny, no compression and the warmth on two. And then usually uh, this is at like a five and this is at a three. So it's not louder or quieter. It's usually just noticeably enhanced by the harmonic generation of the tranny in here. So that goes. It just adds a little bit of punch and it is really another thing that's more noticeable when you listen to it in the mix. Also, it's more noticeable when you have a sub on, you really hear it. So that's that. And then I have my parallel compression, which I'm just using the SSL 4KB uh, and I'm using its compressor and I'm just maxing everything out. Um, and then I did this mic pre-gain thing, and it sounds like this. And now I'll put in the bass bus, and I'll take the crush in and out. Again, subtle, but it's just adding a tiny bit and some movement. And then at the end, I'm using, I don't, I'm not doing anything with this. This is just here in case for the overall stuff. If I want to finesse it some more EQ wise or compression wise. And then I followed that up with this uh, newfangled saturator and I am using it as a hard clipper. So... So that's holding it in place so it's not going to go above a certain amount. It's just going to chop it. And you can use a limiter for this, but I like to use the saturate because it just, it can do it in a transparent way. And if I really need to squeeze it more, then I will. So right now though, 
this is still preliminary stuff. I'm, you know, not even in the mix stage, but I try to get things as I go, you know. I try to get it as really good going in and then do what I need to do once it's in to get it to sound good to me. Um, but it's not, you know, it's never the final until it's the final, right? So this is just for me to hear it what it could be sometimes i do it just so i can you know have an idea of where i'm headed do i need to track it again am i going is this sound going to work for the song if not you know then we go to plan b or something so now we're going to do it back to back with the hx stomp ampeg thing in there with the new recording that i just did and Again, this isn't apples to apples. I didn't set out to like, oh, this is better than this. This is not that kind of video. It's just to show you the difference between pre-production scratch tracking uh, compared to when you actually try to track something to get it for a finished product. All right, so here we go. I am going to A, B these two. So pink is the old base and this purplish thing is that says bf amp is the amp all right so we'll start with the amp and then i'll go to the pink which is the line six hx stomp Let's hear it in the context of the music now, and I'm going to start with the amp. Alright, so obviously the HX stomp was a lot lower in the mix, so why don't I turn that up and turn the amp down a little bit. We'll see if I can get them a bit more comparable. So the HX stomp's not bad, but it's, you know, it's the distortion that I used or the fuzz that I used is obviously um, more harsh and not as pleasing. The low end is not there as, as well, but when they're matched like that, you know, it does give you a better understanding of it. Um, the amp has a uh, more consistent sound in the low end. It stays where it's at. It doesn't move around as much. Like I said, it was for scratch tracking, but it's also to show the difference between scratching, scratch tracking, pre-production, and final mix type stuff. So we're not there just yet, but we're getting there. So in the next one, I'm going to record drums, and, and we'll start getting that process going, and then I might add some vocals. I'll probably add some vocals. I keep saying that, but uh, I will probably add vocals too, and, and then... Then once all that's done, then we'll do a, you know, start mixing everything for real and get a final mix and all that fun stuff. So if you're into that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe, hit the like, 
hit the bell to stay notified and I'll see you in the next one.